Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could all join us today. Please, please join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, our cups truly do runneth over, and we owe it all to you because you have led us, guided us, and directed us. And we, we continuously look to you, Father, and trust you, knowing what you tell us, Father, is real. It's truth. It's really the only truth on this planet as we live today. And we live by that truth, and we thank you for that. But it also puts us in a position to be ready, willing, and able to, to take your word and to minister to others when given an opportunity. And it seems, Lord, that it's getting fewer and fewer times that we can do this, but each soul is important to you. And I know that we still have a work to do. How do I know that? Because we are still here. If we weren't here, then that work would be concluded on our part. But right now, you have granted us an opportunity to do that work, and we thank you for that. Also, Father, we have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. You know every heart, every need, every wish, every dream, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for answering them always in perfect season. And Father, also we pray for our congregation around the world, that they continue to study thy word and pray to you and, and do what what is necessary to, con, uh, to, to complete their mission on this planet. Also, Father, we pray for the OMB family, for Morgan to grow in spirit, Dave, Kitty for clarity and strength, John, and the Comer family and friends and, and, and um, co-workers. We ask the <coughs> Lord on all these that you lead, that you guide, that you direct, that you touch, and that you heal. In Yahshua's precious holy name. Also, Father, we pray that we may not be found wanting, but doing thy word in this, these end days. It's important to you, and it's important to us, Father. So do whatever is necessary, and I, I know what I'm about to pray. Do whatever it is necessary to make us right with you. That's the most important thing in our lives right now to stay focused and to be ready willing and able to give glory and honor and praise to you by helping your children and we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel wherever they are whatever they are doing we pray they have not forsaken thy word and they have not forsaken prayer and they will return to the sheepfold soon and we pray for Israel and our nation for thy kingdom to come knowing that it will be thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, Come, Lord, come. And we pray for those first responders every day that are on the front lines helping your children around the world. We pray for their safety, as well as our military who are in arms way, who are still about to go into arms way. We pray for their safety and speedy return home. <clears throat> and I pray, dear Lord, always for the lost those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive that truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day through thy holy word. In Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, getting back into our Father's word, I said last week, uh, try very hard not to miss this lecture. To me, this is one of the most important lectures, one of, the, one of them, there's, there's many of course, but um, in the Bible, because it, it talks about basically a, a person in uh, um, Asaph, Asaph. <clears throat> Asaph basically, uh, he was a worship leader in David's time, but he was also a prophet in David's time. And this particular prophet almost, I said almost, lost his faith. And he's going to be discussing uh, the ins and outs of 
looking at other people, uh, and I'll, I'll call them evil, but they're not all evil. And just because a person has money and is very prosperous doesn't necessarily make them evil. But depends how they gain that monies. I remember uh, uh, a passage in the Bible about uh, Christ talking to this very wealthy merchant. And uh, the merchant really wanted to follow Christ. So he said. So he said, but uh, he wanted to know what he needed to do to, to, to do that. And basically, Jesus flat out told him, get rid of your stuff. You know, and and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, of yeah. course. But the guy had a lot of stuff. He was wealthy. And it's not that uh, the man didn't want to follow Jesus. He thought he wanted to follow Jesus. But when Jesus told him, well, get rid of your stuff and follow me, he backed out of it. Yep. You know, and this is sort of kind of where this where this is going to. Um, we're going to be talking about the prosperous, yes, but <clears throat> we're also going to be talking about those that prospered on the backs of other people, meaning they cheated, they lied, they stole, or whatever the case may be. Now, in today's world, you have, let's say, a person. Uh, any particular individual who has not come to Christ, let's say, and they're out there looking in the world. They're looking. They're looking in churches. They're looking in the Bible. They're looking to people, and they see how people are living today, and by what means they're living today, and they can be swayed very easily today by seeing others how they've prospered in the world because uh, a lot of them have made quite a lot of money. Again, there's nothing wrong with making money, but if you don't do it the right way, you can, you can falter. You can fall into a trap. You can fall into a snare. Um, and I'll bring this up because uh, um, I don't know about you guys, but did anybody this last go around with the lottery when it got up to $1.6 billion? Did yeah. anybody buy a lottery ticket? No. Yeah. No? I did. I did too. Oh. And I, How did it work? How well, did it work out for you? Same as it always does. <laughs> Well, the I thing is, what? I gave to the school system, let's say. Okay. The <laughs> but system? my point being is, every time I buy a lottery ticket, not that I buy them often. No. $1.6 billion, I could do a lot of good work for the Lord. Yes. But you know what? I'm doing a lot of good work just and right oh, now. You're doing just not, fine. I'm doing yeah. just fine. <laughs> but my point being is, every time, and Donna can contest to this, every time I bought a lottery ticket in a situation like that, I told Donna, this would ruin us. So Have you I want not? to be ruined? No, I don't. Oh. No, I don't. Well, why'd now, you buy it? Huh? And why'd you buy it? I don't know. you like Paul. I try yeah, to do I, it. I don't know. The thing is, the way I look at it, Lord, and I've always prayed, Lord, if you want me to win this thing, you know, it's going to go for your glory because the money's going to go to him. And his answer's always the same. And they're always the same. Stay your course. <laughs> you know. I need your money. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep that. Now, keep that dollar. would my life change yes. if I won $1.6 billion? No, no. You think it's For a person who says that one is a liar no. and they don't understand the reality of life, oh, God, it no. would change them. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, just by the hordes of people that would be coming at yep. them left and right. You have you to know. move. <laughs> but anyways, where am I going with this? I'm oh, talking yeah. about money. I'm talking about prosperity. And there's all kinds of different ways of achieving that, but it's what you do with it that's important. Mm -hmm. But this isn't the story today. The story today is when a person looks at a person, another person who's very prosperous, and then they start 
envying that person. Mm -hmm. so commandment. Comparison. What's, what's the test That's of commandment? commandment. Like number nine. Thou shalt not covet. You know, for you want what another person wants, mm -hmm. you, because you don't have it. Comparison is the comparison of joy. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Yes. Um, I can attest to that personally <clears throat> in my early days. Um, raised to know of God in my early days, but fell away, um, fell in with the wrong crowd. Um, was was in the mindset that I can get what I can get without having to work for it and got in trouble. Found out real quick. Um, you can't change yourself if you keep hanging around with the same kind of people. I mean, I'm, I'm sure anything's possible with the Lord, but it's very difficult. And I believe He pulled me out of that situation. And it was little baby steps along the way. Well, there's the key. There's only one way to get out of that. Only one. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to cover today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 1, Psalm 73, and it reads, <clears throat> this is a Psalm of Asaph. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart, and a, a pure heart. God is good. Well, guess what? God's good to everybody. They just don't know it. Mm -hmm. They don't accept it. Verse 2, listen. <clears throat> but as for me, my feet were almost gone. What does that mean? That means I was walking in the way of truth. I was walking in the way of righteousness. I was doing what was correct. But I slipped and mm -hmm. I fell. Yeah. My steps had well nigh slipped. I mean... He's basically saying, I, I fell off the wagon, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I was doing what was right. Stumbled. I was, I, was, I was doing all those things required of me by uh, Scripture and our Father. But what's not written here is what happened to Asaph. Asaph got into certain situations, which I don't know. I, I'm just assuming he got into certain situations that caused him to question his walk. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but he's going to elaborate a little bit. Listen, verse 3. For I was envious at the foolish <laughs> when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And, and that is so much true even to this very day. Yeah. If you look at the prosperity of some people, I don't know. Have you guys ever watched um, a program? I, I don't know the name of it. It's, it's really irrelevant, but it, it has all these mansions and million-dollar homes that people go into. And how they, have you ever seen those programs yeah. on TV? Robin Lynch. Mm -hmm. Well, he, that was one of them years know. ago, but now they got the same thing going. Not him, but... Yeah. Or yachts. Or these humongous uh, three hundred thousand dollar RVs, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's out there, mm -hmm. and we we can see this every day. But how we look at it is very important to our Father. Mm. You know, there's nothing wrong with those things; mm -hmm. they're there. But it's what you put your faith in. It's what you put your trust in. It's what you put your time in. And what it appears to me is is that the more you have, the more time you need to spend on keeping it, <laughs> which takes away from what's truly important, and that is focusing on our Father and His children. <laughs> now, there are some people that are extremely wealthy that do give a lot. I mean, they give millions to people. and I'm talking about people who really need it. I'm not just talking to them for tax purposes but they do they help a lot of people but you don't don't hear their names because they don't publicize it as they shouldn't you know but listen he says I was envious verse 4 for there are no bands in their death now uh, the Targum manuscript reads this a little different let me do the whole verse for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is 
firm, okay. meaning strength in themselves. Their strength is is okay. is is uh, firm. But the Targum reads this a little different. It says they are not terrified nor troubled because of the day of their death. Okay. Why? They have nothing to worry about. They got all the money that they need. And see, a lot of people think, oh, they're scared of, you were talking about people being scared of dying and stuff. Uh -huh. But we're talking about prosperous people that, you know what, that doesn't even cross their mind. <laughs> you know, that you doesn't, don't know that. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about I'm, these I'm people. I'm saying in general. I'm talking about these people right here. And the fact is, it says here, for there are no bands in their death. They don't, they don't even think about it. They've got, like, illness. Don and I have been discussing about Medicare oh, yeah. and getting um, Part B and Part C. Oh, Lord, I'm, fi well, I'm finding don't out it's it. basically free now for our age. We're going to the uh, Council of Aging it's tomorrow. Not free for I, I well, you know what I mean. Um, Hold it. I can't afford nothing that's free. Um, mm -hmm. uh, not that the... Um, the um, he ain't listening. The, uh, supplemental? Supplemental, thank you. Supplemental. A lot of it's free now. But a, a wealthy person, a prosperous person, doesn't even have to think about that. No, they don't. Because they, they got all the money that they need to take care of themselves. Yeah, and a lot of them are very, very healthy. Why? Because, because that's exactly the what they do. Mm -hmm. they, they spend the money, you know. Instead of letting their teeth all fall out before they get dentures, they have them pulled out and dentures put in. You know, have a good -looking I'm being board. hypothetical, but uh, but that's 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 what they do. That's wonderful. And I know what you're talking about, Becca, and and, and uh, with uh, certain people who who are prosperous, that some of them are scared to death, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. Verse five. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Why? Because they don't have to deal with all that stuff. You know, they, they got enough money to make things happen in their life that they want happen. You know, now we don't have that uh, per se, but we got more wealth than that actually. And we got a doer who will take care of us and prosper us in a spiritual manner so much greater than what we're talking about here. Listen to verse 6. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. See, that they're, they're prideful people. Violence covereth them as a garment. You say, well, wait a minute now. <laughs> Why is violence covering them when they got enough money to um, do whatever they want to do. Because what does wealth do in most cases? Corrupt. Why did Christ say that that corrupts people? Because they put their their time and effort into either maintaining it or making more. And that takes away. If you're A pain band. always thinking about how to make more, are you thinking at all about giving any away? See, that there's a difference in peoples here that we're talking about. These people are very prosperous now, and they and they all didn't win the lottery. I mean, they became prosperous in whatever category that, that they are in. And this is also means that they would do whatever they had to do to keep their money. Do what they had to do to keep the money. Right. Verse 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. Now that's the kind of people we're talking about here. They got more money than they could ever possibly need. You know. Or spend. You say, well that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of money. But there's a lot of people that have this. But we've got to understand where, where our father's going with this. Remember, we started off with, with Asaph uh, that, that he was, and still is, a prophet. And, and um, he's a worship leader in David's time.
but he's 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 slipped away from that worship. He slipped away from that that looking only to God for his needs. He's starting to look to the world here. What these other, hey, look what these other people got. Well, how did they get that? I want some of that. Why shouldn't I have some of that? I remember as a, a kid growing up thinking, okay, I'm going to work, but how I work is very important. I, was, I, I remember thinking, well, if I have to work hard, why can't I make a lot of money? <laughs> if I'm going to work hard, if I'm going to work hard, I want to make a lot of money. But I, I, I realized, and there, no, I never made this kind of money, but I did make some money in my heyday. But I found out that's not where the importance was. Because when I was striving, and I was sometimes working three jobs, literally, three jobs a week, and I was making money. But I wasn't happy. I was miserable. You know, and unfortunately, Shane had to grow up in a situation where I was always gone. For sleeping. You know, that's why I, I, I admire my son for what he does with his kids. <coughs> He's there for them in most cases, a lot of times, and he does a lot of things with them. You know, not putting you on no pedestal, son, but... Yeah, please don't. Uh, well, you don't deserve to be on the pedestal. Oh. Oh. God does. But the point being is, he learned from my mistakes. Well, there you go. We you know, often do. Hopefully, we do. Yeah. Learn yeah. The Bible's yeah. full of children that didn't. Bible's and and this world is full of children who aren't learning that. You know. Mm. But listen, verse eight puts it in in perspective where the rubber meets the road. Yep. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. What do you mean speak wickedly concerning oppression? They said like it. Anyone that tries to oppress them. Yeah. They're totally against. Yeah. If you if you if you go to them and say, Well, you know, you're you're living wickedly, I don't care how much money you got, you know, mm. you're the wrong person. Hey, I got money. I know. Say, they got a mindset. You can't tell me about God because I've got more money than you do. I should know. <laughs> now that sounds very stupid, does doesn't it? Foolish. But not to them. <laughs> See, they're they're so their mind is so turned. Now, if you if you really start to understand this, you're going to start understanding why the world is the way it is right now. Especially when you got all these people. As I don't like talking about the government. But billions and billions and billions of dollars have gone out of this country in the last two years. Uh -huh. For all kinds of different things. Who's paying for all that? We are. Well, well no, we're not anymore. Because we don't know it. We don't own it anymore. Other countries own it. They're the ones who control the purse strings in this country right okay. now. It's terrible, yeah. but that's the way it is. It is. But it's it's biblical. Yeah. You know that we're you know when you let go of God, you don't follow God. You're going to face the consequences. Samuel. <laughs> Samuel. He told him. He did. They don't listen. So did Ezekiel. Yeah. So did Jeremiah. Yeah. Verse nine. They set their mouth against the heavens. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, why are they speaking against God? Those are idiots. <laughs> and their tongue walketh through the earth. Oh, they're, yeah, their tongue walketh through the earth because people listen to them. I've never been able to understand why a rock star who could be drug-induced can get through to so many millions of teenagers because they idolize that person. Well, there's people who idolize wealth. They idolize people who have wealth. Not knowing and not caring how that person got the wealth. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they say, well, they got a lot of money, they should know. They're a star, they should know. 
Now we laugh at that, understandably, because we know the truth and where the truth comes from. Truth doesn't come from a person who has a bunch of money. As a matter of fact, they're foolish. On the ones that set their mouth against the heavens. Not all people that are prosperous set their mouth against God. But we're talking about those that do. And this is the one Asaph was looking at, and he was he was he was following what they were doing, he was seeing what they were doing, and he was thinking, I want that for this particular time being. So we know that's not the avenue to be on. But it's critical for us to understand this is where people's heads are today. There's a lot of people, yes, that are poor. But they look, why, why are lotteries so big? Why? Really? Why? God why made a lot so of big? stupid people. Huh? <laughs> God loves stupid people, otherwise he wouldn't have made so many. Or he wouldn't have created money, right? <laughs> But well, what's that? What's that saying? You know what God thinks about money. Just look at who He gives it to. Yeah, I love that saying. <laughs> but point being is, the reason the lottery is so expensive today is because people are poor, and they want. And they want. They think. They feel that if they had all this money, my problem is solved. If they had all this money. They could better themselves. My problems will go away. <laughs> well, your 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 problems with bills, I guess, would go away, even though you'd have them, but you'd have enough money to pay them. Yeah, see. But that's not going to solve the problem, is it? And see, that's that's where this lies: is that our Father wants us to open up our eyes and realize there's something going on here still today, very important today. Yeah that people are putting their focus on, and it's not God. So, and they say, how doth God... Uh, no, I'm, I'm going too far ahead. Verse 10. Therefore, his people return hither. Now, I'm going to read to you off the, the uh, uh, Targa manuscript on this one. Because it doesn't say his people. Oh. What it does say is, my people who seeing the prosperity of the wicked and feeling their own afflictions return to the same way of thinking. That's what the manuscript says on this. And it says, And waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. See, these people, they observe the troubles of a religious life through their eyes. They observe the troubles of a religious life and the prosperity of wicked men and choose what appears to be the easy way out. And that easy way out is to have a lot of money. You know, they think that's their goal. And whatever their goal is, that's what they try to achieve. Mm -hmm. And then it says, And waters of full cup are wrung out to them. And the manuscript says, Many tears flow unto them. Uh, Big difference. Yeah, I mean. Well, why? You say, well, wait a minute now. These people are rich. Why are tears flowing unto them? That's what you're talking about. They're not happy. No. Because they, they, they're going to realize, and hopefully sooner than later, that money does not bring them happiness. And what does Christ say? You could have all the money in the world, but lose your own soul. You know, and that's what this is talking about. You can get so lost in 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 thinking of this this prosperity idea. That's why I get so upset with what they call these prosperity preachers. Have you ever heard of them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it doesn't take long once you listen to them. <laughs> oh, they'll say the name Jesus or. Father, God the Savior. But it won't take them long before they start talking about making money. And that big one for me was <coughs> you send in twenty nine ninety five and I will send you this prayer cloth. You take this prayer cloth, you put it over your body wherever you're ailing. 
you are going to be hailed. That's a good lotto ticket right there. And, uh, um, now, there's a lot of people that fall for that. They believe in it. We had a, um, a person in our congregation who fell for a preacher that uh, laid hands on him and, and immediately healed him. And they even contested that they felt better. Uh, but they weren't healed. Uh, you got a lot of people out there that are willing to look to people who are gullible. And what our Father wants us to learn here is how not to be gullible. And that, yes, there's plenty of money out there. Guess what? Until the end of days, there's going to be plenty of money out there. But that's not where we need to have our head at. That's not where our true riches lie. And there's only one place. What verse am I on? Uh, 11. Okay. And they say, How doth God know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we laugh at that, don't we? Can you, can, you know, how, when I was, let me finish the whole verse. Okay. And is there knowledge in the Most High? Do we even need to ask that question? Does that thought even need to come into our brain? They wrote it, so it must be from there for a reason. It is there for a reason because that's what they say. I'm talking about those that think that their stuff don't stink. That they don't, hey, they got enough money, they don't need to depend on anybody. don't need anybody. And what does Jesus say about that? He says they already have their riches. Yeah. Got your reward right now. But what did Murray always say? Well, they better live it up now because this is all they got. Right. And that's true. It is. Because none can come to the kingdom except through the Lord Jesus Christ. No one. I mean, unless you accept him, you're not getting to the kingdom. And and guess what? I don't care how much money you got. You ain't buying your way in. No, you don't take water. There's no way. And there's people over the years that you have that tried to... money they're given? Huh? You mean all that tithe money they're given isn't getting them in jail? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> No. You can give you can give the ties to the cows come home. Um, I was being facetious. I know you that's were. That's where the yeah. you know some of the people that are well to do yeah. they say, well, I tie, I go to church, and mm -hmm. I tie. I bought my ticket. I should be there. Uh -huh. yeah. Just like that person when I was doing the ministry at the flea market. Walking down the aisle, you've heard this. I don't okay. know if William has. Hand you the money. Hands me twenty dollars, and I said, "What's this for?" They said, "Well, for me to make money, I gotta spend money. Gotta give money. Gotta give money. I give money." Yeah. And um, I told them it doesn't work that way, and they found out it doesn't work that way. Uh -huh. But as, that coincides with what you're saying. People feel that you know. I get I get my ties, so I'm good. I, I'm yep. good, you know. I'm in. Yep. Um, it doesn't work that. Why doesn't it work that way? It has nothing to do with your faith. That's right. It's the faith. What, is what's the whole point of what we're coming up with here? What's the, What's the Lord want us to see? Where are we need to put our focus on? Yep. In Him. And stay focused. And and here's the key. Be thankful for what you have and where you're at. That doesn't mean that you cannot prosper anymore from what you're at. But if the Lord wants you to prosper from where you're at, He will prosper you in the position you're in. Or move to even another position. But the thing is, it seems to me that where a lot of people are failing today, they're just not happy where they're at. And the reason they're not happy with where they're at is because they're not with God. They're not putting Him first in everything. Just like I said, you know, when, when I first came to this, this abundance of knowledge, 
of putting God first. Donna said when I was going to this church that that church was my mistress because I was learning then. I didn't know fully then, but I was learning then to put God first. I didn't know how to do it. I was just trying. I was learning. And then she's on she's just there with me now, you know, and there's there's no problem whatsoever. Um I remember I came to her oh, this a couple months ago and I said um what if the Lord sent me on a mission trip? Is, is that how I put it to you? I can't remember if that was exactly, but that somewhere about like Africa or something. If the Lord sent me to overseas somewhere, you want to tell him what you said? This ought to be good. I said, have a nice trip. <laughs> she said, have a nice trip. Give me a, give me a. To which she had to repent for. Because, no, this was just, a, again, a hypothetical. Why well, you have to repent for it? I was gonna say, I I wish you have a good time, because we do everything together. If I if I I would never in my life think about going anywhere unless the Lord told me. Well, that's what mm -hmm. you just said. What if the Lord? I told didn't me? I didn't say the well, Lord told you know me. What? Oh, we didn't well, know you about did. your pact here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. You just said, "What if the Lord sent me on a mission trip?" Yes, but the Lord. Up, well, I should have been. I, I should have been more. I should have been more elaborate. Oh, I don't feel. I think although he say, could. I think he did say sent us on a mission trip. Did I? I think he did, and I said have a nice trip. Or, oh, I'll be here when you get back. Or yeah. Oh. In other words, lines. we're both going. But you she. Know, at she that ain't. point, I wasn't told by the Lord. We yeah, going she on. Well, I wasn't either. Yeah. I this was a hypothetical. Yeah. You're trying to borrow trouble, ain't you? <laughs> yeah. I'm just, don't it was one of those situations, I don't know about your all's life, <laughs> but in my life, every once in a while, I get these wild ideas. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> huh? I get these wild ideas, and uh, I'm not saying they come from the Lord. I'm just saying I get these wild ideas okay. of what-if scenarios. And being yeah, a pastor right. sometimes, I just can't keep my mouth shut on that. Just can't keep it up here, so I elaborate it. That's where I'm coming from, Ross. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> the look on your face was even funnier when I said what yeah. you said. Yeah, it yeah. was. Cause that's I right. Because she always told me, no matter where you go, I'm there. Yeah, well. And then I heard, no, I ain't going to go. We're going to Mission to Africa next summer. Now, if the Lord, when we did expound on it, that if yes. the Lord had moved me right. at that same time, right. then we would go. Right. But at that moment, I wouldn't hear it. It's just wrong talking. But here's the key <laughs> fact, folks. <laughs> when the Lord does give you something, yeah. do it. Oh, yeah. No matter what you think the outcome may be. And that, that's where a lot of people fail God. Yeah. They say, well, do you want me to do what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, how am I going to do that? Yeah. Well, with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and if he gives you something to do, I suggest you do it. Yeah. Why not? Will it get done if you don't do it? Mm -hmm. He'll yes. get somebody else. He'll get somebody else to do it. Yeah, it'll it'll get lesson. done. But you'll learn a lesson in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, you will, yeah. and I did, and I still still do from time to time. Yeah. All right, behold, verse twelve says, "These are the ungodly." That that that's where the rubber meets the road. See, we're not talking about people who are prosperous, do love God, and 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 do right. do use what God has given them as a gift to help others. We're talking about those that could be questioning God. Does he have any sense? You know, how does God know? Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't even think of saying something like that. I, I just, I feel I, I would, I'd get a swift kick, you know, where. I just laugh at people like that. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. The ungodly who prosper in God. the world. Yeah. They increase in riches. And they rightly keep, so, because that's all they'll ever have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why... I won't say rightly so, but... Uh, well, what I'm saying is, in a way it's poetic. If, if they're gathering all their riches and that's where their heart is and their soul and their mind is, yeah. 
then they have it for a time to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then nothing. That's right. So it's easier to let them go on. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Father's not telling, uh, telling us to try to talk them out of it, is he? Apparently he can't. He's just saying they're ungodly people who are living this way because they're not putting God first. They won't even listen to him. As a matter of fact, that's right. They won't even listen to him. Okay. Don't be envious of them. Don't, right. that's don't right. be envious of what they have. Because what they do have is only of the world. And this world is temporary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes, this this terra firma will continue, but the world as we know it and this evilness of it will be done away with. And I have to confess here, I don't know how I came to be this way because I remember clearly in my younger years, really envious, you know, of people that had more and had stuff, and I was really kind of... I think we all go through that. You know, so I don't know how this happened to where I don't give a darn anymore, which I don't. But there was a time that I did. And I think it's a change in my heart. It's who oh, you yeah. know now. Do what? It's who you know now. Mm -hmm. Who you follow. Who you, you listen to. to What's well, another sa statement? You are what you eat. You eat the Word of God, you have the blessings of that Word. It comes to you, inside of you. You're, you're a new creation. You just don't think the way you used to think. Mm -hmm. well. That's why it says, verily, verse 13, or truly, <coughs> I have cleansed my heart in vain. Now remember who he was. Yeah. And washed my hands in innocency. What do you think he's talking about here? I have cleansed my heart in vain. I don't know. Did you have to go to the Targum? When that means that he he couldn't get over it. Basically, he couldn't get over the feelings he was having. He still, even though he knew all this stuff, he was still envious of those people. So, in other words, he was praying to God for clarity and to to overcome this, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It didn't. Now, why do you think that is? Same reason we don't get our prayers answered at times. Our heart's not right. In other words, even though we won't admit it, there's times that we play games with God. Mm -hmm. If you do this, I'll do that. It's one you know, yeah. Not always. And we learn not to do that. <laughs> But there are times in our life, especially growing up in the Christendom and learning that we pray certain things like, Lord, forgive me of, Lord, forgive me of um, smoking cigarettes. Not that cigarettes is a salvation issue. I'm just saying hypothetically, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I'm killing my body by smoking these cigarettes. Please help me. And then you light up a cigarette. You don't really want to quit. And the thing is, you don't try. You don't. And, and the reason I bring this up is because I went through that. I was a three pack a day smoker. Yeah, three mm -hmm. packs. Three packs a day smoker, chain smoker. And I needed to quit. I was preaching at the time, but I needed to quit. Okay. I did not quit. I tried the patches and this and the gum and this and. And um, I won't say that because it's it's a bad word. But anyway, so um, I tried doing all this stuff, but then one night I got serious with God, and He knew I I was dead serious. I said, Lord, I I need your help. I said, I don't know what else to do. I said, if you could just take that moment of biting a nail in half while I'm trying to quit, you know that 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 tension you get. Any smoker knows what I'm talking about. Or ex-smoker, I should say, that quit. And he did. He took that that, mm. that anger away from me. Mm -hmm. And I quit. I, I Cold turkey quit. Mm. Uh, even to the point where six months, eight months down the road where 
I said, boy, I, want I bet you that stinks. And I picked up one and I lit it. He knocked me flat on my back, literally. I was going down three steps. I was at the bottom of those steps and I took that hit out of that cigarette and he knocked me flat on my back. I ain't had one since. <laughs> Because he, he knew I was serious. Well, he was going to be serious with me. Okay. You know. Now, am I saying God himself knocked me flat? It could have been an archangel or, or any angel for that matter. But I know one thing. I was on my back. And I hadn't had one since. Thanks, thanks to him. Um, so behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. I uh, did 13, mm -hmm. 14. For all the day long have I been plagued. He's been troubled. Now this is a man of God now. Yeah. And chastened every morning. That means punished every morning. Now some people say, well, wait a minute now. He's a prophet. Yeah. Why is he being chastened? Why is he being troubled every morning? Because he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And it's the same thing that we're talking about here. If we're not doing right, where we're at, right now, we're going to be troubled too. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God loves you. You say, well, that don't make any sense. Yes, it does. Because he wants you to learn to trust him. And he's not going to give you like the keys to the kingdom when you're not ready for them. You know, if you're gonna, if and I'm not saying you're purposely doing anything wrong. I'm just saying you, you, you don't get it. You, you, you make up your own mind to follow this prosperity stuff, or whatever sin it is in your life. Well, guess what? You can't enter the kingdom of God with sin. Sin cannot enter the kingdom of God. So if there's any sin in your life that you have not repented of, you've got to deal with it. And you're going to be troubled, and you're going to be punished, just like any parent would their child if they're doing wrong. Any true parent would punish their child until they learn. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Here lies another problem with people. What? They don't feel that they should be punished. Well, I can't help you know? that. They just, they don't think that there's someone out there okay. that cares so much about them because they're such a sinner that they're going to correct them. Right. That they're going, they're, that they're going to, to uh, punish them. Mm -hmm. you know? And then ones that do blame God on another case. Mm -hmm. uh, I was ministering to a guy. He, he blamed God for everything. Everything bad in his life, he blamed God for it. Okay. You know, a lot of people. That's how I like, looked at God. Like, what did God ever do for me? Kind of a thought process going on. But can you see how lost a person can be by making that statement? Yes. Number one, they make the statement God, mm -hmm. which means they must believe in something. Right. But they blame God for all their problems. What a miserable wretch. And that's what I've seen in these folks. Mm -hmm. Miserable wretch they are. They just, they're so lost. So lost. Yep. So he says, what verse am I on? 15. I, if I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. What do you think he means here? Let me read that again. If I say, I will speak thus, that means, for all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning, I should offend against the generation of thy children. God's children, those that follow him, he is. In other words, it'd be like somebody coming to you and saying, well, God doesn't hear us. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't correct. Would you be offended by that? Mm. He thinks they would be. Personally, I kind of laugh at that stuff. So, I don't know if, 
My laughing doesn't sound like I'm offended. Well, it could go, it could go either of two ways. Like, I've been watching these videos of the, the street preachers that stand and proclaim the gospel. Uh-huh. Are you offended? And there are people, there are people that uh, come by and say, praise God, you know. Then there's others that say, hail Satan, and then have a conflict with the mm -hmm. person. Huh. They're you know, when they're, he says, God died for you. You know, Jesus Christ died for you, rather, uh, for your sins. You, know, you didn't die for me, you know. And these people, their composure, while they're doing this, the ones that give you the gospel, amazes me. Mm -hmm. Because I would probably jump off of whatever I was standing on and strangle somebody <laughs> at that point. But It'd feel like Yes, yeah, but that's what that is. If people get offended if you tell them they're doing wrong, or they get offended if they hear something that goes against what they believe. Yes. Should they? My opinion, no. You shouldn't they get have... offended by somebody denying Christ in front of you. Offended? I told you I'd laugh at them. Not you. Huh? Not you. And I, I've, I've, I've done the same thing. Not laugh, but... Uh, oh, I laugh. Chuckle. I'm sure I've got a, a look on my face where it's... It's it's so because I talk about the Lord so much when I hear someone denying Christ altogether and saying God isn't there and and and, and right. all this. You smirk. I, I, I am not offended when I hear something. I'm pierced. Do you know why I laugh? Why? I picture the end of the millennium when you're standing in front of them, and, and, and I, I want to hear you say that one more time. <laughs> I, it was funny the first time. Well, I, I do it a little differently. You know what I do in my heart? I say, Lord, I'd like to have them in the front row. Yeah. Because we know during the millennial period, yeah. God's elect will, yeah. will be teaching with Christ. Right. And uh, I don't, I'm not trying to put myself in no. any kind of hierarchy, but... I would love to get them where there is no evil anymore. There's no Satan. There's no right doubts. There. I mean, they just came through a uh, uh, a cleansing of their flesh body into a spiritual body, right. and so and all that's being taught is 100% right. clarity, truth. And so that's in my head. I'd always say I'd like to have them in the front row, right? You no, know, to where they're going to learn. The nitty gritty but about all this. Today ain't the time. I don't <laughs> think people get offended on others' behalf. People only get offended when it's against them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're attacked. Yes. Well, guess what? What? And, and in that regard, yeah. should you get offended? No. 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 At all, in that regard. Because, why? Jesus stole should us. Should you be offended if you're falsely accused? That's right. I mean, the thing is... He says, the more you learn, the more is going to be required of you. Mm. And the more you learn, the more you're going to be persecuted. He said, they come after Who me. likes to be persecuted? No. Raise no. your hand. <laughs> no, it's not fun. But the thing is, that's, that's happening today and will continue to happen until the end. Yeah. You're going to be persecuted by what? God? No. No. By those non-believers. Right. Because they want you to see what... They see. Well, guess what? Don't you want the same thing for them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, uh, and I, I don't want to get in politics here, but it's just like a Democrat-Republican thing. Yeah. Going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Folks, it doesn't matter who's in charge. Yeah. God's in charge. Nobody gets in a position like that that God himself doesn't place there. Whether you like that person or not, God has his agenda. God has his plan. Yeah. And that plan's going to go through with you or without you. Right. But see, if you're on his side and he's on your side, you'll see this for what it is. Mm -hmm. you know. But listen. Verse 16. When I thought to know this, when I came to the conclusion and I thought all this negativity, the prosperity, it, there might be some to it, but there's still a little heathen. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Yeah. And I can understand that. Yeah. I mean, to see 
see people falling by the wayside because of other people's prosperity. Mm -hmm. They're not even looking to the blessings that... I don't know how many times Don and I have talked to other people and we try to get them to realize when they're going through troubles of how blessed they are. And they can't see it. Because they're so involved in self. And I understand there's a lot of situations to happen to self in a lifetime. And sometimes it's pretty rough to deal with. But if you can put yourself above all that, that's when you start learning the truth behind all this. You see things in a different way through his eyes. That's right. That's what the, the, the I'll go ahead and spoil it. One thing about that movie was he was talking to a man who said he was an apostle who wasn't healed. And he said, why are you doing this? He said, there's very few people I can trust to give them a burden as a blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm paraphrasing, but he That's said, just what, what you see and other people see as a burden or a terrible thing is actually a blessing. Like you were talking about, be thankful for what you have. Sometimes you got to be thankful for the handicaps that you have. Mm -hmm. and, and it may not make any sense now, but he said, when you start healing people yourself, you'll see. Or being used to heal people. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what he said. How am I, how is a cripple guy going to heal somebody who's crippled? What, what does that mean? Yeah. He said, you don't understand how much of a blessing that is. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right, so, uh, one moment. Let me see. About seeing clearly. 17. Let me read 16 again. All right. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me, 17, until uh. I went into the sanctuary of God. Mm. Yeah. What's sanctuary mean? Set aside. Refuge or safety. Right. That's what it is. That I, when I went to the refuge and safety of God, then yes. understood I their end. Yes. Not my end, their end. In other words, I can see clearly. Thank you. So there's only one way to be able to see clearly, and that's going to God and trusting God in what right. He says is real. Right. You trust Him. Verse 18, I'm out of time, goodness. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. He put them in slippery, oh, no, they were prosperous. No, God says, you, you're not seeing the big picture. <laughs> they set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. Oh, what do you mean they're in destruction? They're prosperous. They got everything that they need. That's not their end. No. That's not their end. They're going to live a lifetime, if it goes that way, all their life being prosperous. Okay, just like what you're saying, Becca. Being prosperous. But it's what happens at the end, what's important. <coughs> and technically, for them, there is an end. Mm -hmm. For us, there is no end. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand that. Well, what do you mean there's no way? I'm going to die while I pray. Yeah, your flesh is going to go back to dirt from where it came. But who you are, no, it's not going to die. You're going to continue. You're going to step right from this flesh existence right into the spirit. It's God's promise. Yep. Do we believe that promise or don't we? <laughs> well, I'm living my life that I believe that promise. You know? I've seen enough situations where I know it's true. You know, verse 19. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. Well, what do you think that's going to happen for them? Their last days. It could yep. even be throughout their life. It could be. But we're talking about those that uh, question God. See, that's the key. We see them as they want us to see them. Mm -hmm. But what God is showing you right now is what it is behind the closed doors and the closed shades. 
where their heart and their mind is and what they're going through. A person can put on a very joyful looking presence wearing a $800 suit you know, and look very well to do. But that doesn't mean they're happy. Or they have peace. Have peace. This person I've been telling you about recently told me he went and had um, his heart check. And I said, oh, are you having heart problems? No, he says, but I have to be proactive. Every year I get my body systems checked out. This is the person that's afraid to die. Mm -hmm. So they're spending time getting tests they don't need to try and stave it off. And there is no staving off. Um, one thing that comes to mind is, uh, what's it called, Chiro chirogenics? Cryogenics. 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 Oh, yeah, you don't hear much about that anymore. You don't, do you? No, I wonder why. Uh, lack of power? <laughs> I don't know. I mean... Because you got to have power to keep them frozen. I was say, that, that, could, great. that could be I a, mean, we laugh at that, but think about people. They'll spend thousands, if not millions. I don't know what it costs. But to have their body or yeah. head or whatever it is put in this frozen state. Yeah. Did you ever hear about this? Yeah. Uh, you know, having their heads put in this Maybe frozen like state. Later down the line, when they yeah. find the... the cure for what I'm ailing, yeah. they'll pop me out of there and put me in a there toaster and pop me back up, you know, and get me going. Yeah. Um, I got faith in that. It's the same It's the same mentality, though. Yeah, it is. Same mentality. People are freaked out when they don't need to be. Mm -hmm. People are freaked out. Just look what's happening in the world today. It's crazy. It's crazy. People are freaked out. They're nuts on it. 20, as a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, I'm out of time, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. What does that mean when he awakes? He's not sleeping. Mm -hmm. We're in here today. What, what, what is he talking about when thou awakest? The Lord's day. Pays attention. Oh. When the Lord decides, the Lord knows anyways, instantaneous. Mm -hmm. But this, this, this prophet is saying, Lord, when, when you take the time, you're, you're going to see and despise what they're doing. Well, he already despises what they're doing. That's why this guy's writing what he's writing. It's not coming from him. It's coming from the Lord. You know, Lord already despises this. And he doesn't want people to fall into the traps of it. That's the key. And you can fall into the trap of this very easily today. You know, especially in the economics that we have today. Um, I thank God every day for what I have. All, all this, 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 since COVID started and all this pandemic and all this economic woes yeah. hasn't affected me one iota. It's nice to be broke, isn't it? <laughs> I ain't broke. I am. I ain't broke. And the, and the, and the I'm thing, happy for it. Huh? And I'm happy for it. Well, good. <laughs> but the point being is is that God takes care of his own. And I'm not trying to put myself above anybody else by one way or another. I'm just saying when you follow God, and that means when you make mistakes, you repent, and you get back with God, and you stay focused on Him, and when troubles happen, you pray to Him and you ask for guidance and all that. He wants to take a personal interest in your life. He does. But it seems to me that when we're being raised, we're taught to stand up on your own two feet. Yeah. You know? And you have to learn to let go and let God. And truly put all your faith and trust in Him. And that way, you will prosper. But not in the ways of these, these heathen. You'll prosper in a way where your riches are in the eternal kingdom forever. You're broken. You're still too careful. And today, you're living a life that you are at peace with. And I don't care. 
and I've mentioned this to saint sinner alike out there, everybody wants the same thing. I don't care who you are. You could be the biggest heathen in the world, but everybody wants the same thing. They want peace in their life. Mm -hmm. Whatever they think that peace may be, but that's what they want. But there's only one Prince of Peace. There's only one creator of that. And you're not going to get it any other way. Nope. So, any question about what we covered so far? No, but I have a comment. Go ahead. You know, we were talking about being persecuted or hearing someone speak against God, and you know whether it angers you or not. I think, thinking on it, that it makes me sad. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Lord's taken whatever anger I would have had in the past and replaced it with compassion, because I feel badly for those people. I mean, it hurts my heart. Mm -hmm. um, well, Christ himself wept. And, and it causes me to pray for them. Yeah. That's good. But we need to stay focused on what he wants us to learn. <coughs> and really what he wants us to learn is how to get in other people's heads. That these, this is what they think. Well, and this is what they say. He's a big picture when yes. dealing with people. Not just a little tunnel vision. We're yeah. looking, what's our brass ring? We're looking for the eternal kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's what we. That's what we're waiting for, and we're we're striving to get there. Now, believe it or not, I really believe it's a whole lot easier to get there than a lot of people realize. Oh, yeah. A whole lot easier to get there than people realize. But there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. You got to start there. Yeah, there's a lot more to learn. I've said this once. I've said it a hundred times. If all we needed was the salvation message, this would be a very short book. Yeah. We'd have John 3.16. That's it. Close it. But there's a lot more to, our Father wants us to learn. Yes, we need that. We need Jesus, of course. But we need to learn how to deal with all these people <coughs> that we're living around. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, we'll fall into their snare. That's what he's talking about here. Yeah. He doesn't want us to fall into that trap right. of the taking our eyes off the prize, mm -hmm. taking our eyes off Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for the blessings of your word. You're showing us, Father, that it's so important to stay focused and to realize, yes, this is happening all around us, but for us to stay focused in your word and, and do what it takes, Father, in the study of that word and do what it says which is important. And love you. That's what you've always wanted. I pray for everyone here today and their families, all those on YouTube and their families, that you watch over us and you continuously lead, guide, and direct us. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all, all our strength, with all our souls. In Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory.